Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. We've got the last Halloween treat of the season for you. It makes me kind of sad. Um, we're going to make this bun acetate flip top treat box. I love this little box. We've been doing a lot with the acetate card boxes. If you're not a kitchen table stamper email subscriber, you might want to get on the list because just recently I sent a tutorial, not exactly this project, but this project where we used the same acetate box to do a box bag in a box. So really fun stuff going on and you'll want to check out kitchentablestamper.com slash email to get signed up for my weekly tutorials. I send a free tutorial every week that is um, different and exclusive from anything that you can find on any of my social media. So um, this is our acetate card box treat package for today. And I call it that because that's what we're going to start with is one of these Stampin' Up! acetate card boxes. We're going to cut one of these right in half. So these boxes are fantastic for uh, storing, gifting, and selling your handmade cards, but they also make fantastic treat packaging with just a little modification. So I got my Stampin' Up! trimmer here. Let me slide this guy in. And we're going to cut this box right in half. Don't open it. Don't pop it yet. We want it to be um, nice and flat so that it goes, cuts on the trimmer easily. We're going to line up this flap, the very edge of this flap. It's hard to see the clear, I know, at the four inch mark. And then we're going to give this a little cut. All right. So just take it with your trimmer. And if you want to, you can go back and forth. I've found though that if it doesn't cut all the way through, you can usually just fold it back and forth and it'll pop um, right into two pieces. Now you've got the boxes to make two treats. Cute, huh? <laughs> all right, the other little surprise that I have for you today, I'm just gonna pop this open and fold it up while we're talk, is my stamp set. So we're gonna use bits and pieces from the Clever Cats. We've got the cute Halloween designer series paper, but you might not recognize this big toad. It is from the Prince and Princess host set from Stampin' Up. So there's our treat box. Let me slide these guys aside and let me show you this. Um, this stamp set is only available for hosts. Now, you can show the catalog, collect some orders. I would be very happy to help you place those orders as a workshop and get the Prince and Princess stamp set for free. It is a host exclusive. It can only per be purchased with ho um, host rewards, with the Stampin' Rewards. Or you can place an order of $150 or more. That qualifies your own individual order as a workshop and you get host rewards. So this is one of the exclusive gifts that you can get. Your host rewards start at $150 and can be used on any catalog merchandise, but it's the only way to purchase host exclusives. So we're going to use this awesome frog and I love the Hey Handsome greeting. Of course, you can do like my original sample and put Happy Halloween. I'm going for the Hey Handsome because this one's for my son. And the next Hey Handsome is going to be for my husband. So let's go ahead and um, get started with this box. Now, the first thing you need is the papers for your flap. Your flap is basic black cardstock cut with the scallop contours die it's the second largest one that's got the pierced scallop and not the biggest one that has the open eyelet scallop so the second largest one basic black and cut that one already ahead of time and then you need designer series paper that's two and five eighths by three and seven eighths so a little tip for you i love to um, take these dies and layer them with designer shares paper or layer them with a piece of white cardstock that I've stamped. But I hate measuring again and again what size the paper is that needs to be in there. So when I make up these charts, part of it is because it helps me to give you good instruction, a visual guide to which size die I used from that die set. But it also helps with things like exactly how big is that in real life? Well, the measurement of that cutout piece is on my chart. And 
what size designer series paper or cardstock layer would I put inside of there? Well, as soon as I discover that, as soon as I measure it the first time, I write it in my chart. So just a little tip, maybe that's how you want to keep track of those things instead of measuring the same die uh, cut out again and again to see what size designer series paper you need to put in the center. All right, so I'm going to take my two and five eighths by three and seven eighths inch cute Halloween paper, and I'm going to glue it inside this stitched, or it's really a pierced scallop cut out. I'm using liquid glue and I used quite a bit around the edges because when we score and fold this, we want it to stay stuck together, both layers, but we don't want to match up the scores later. We don't want to score them individually. Now I'm burnishing that down and really spreading that glue around and I'm going to let it dry before I put it in my Simply Score tool because scoring wet paper can lead to a mess. While this dries, let's stamp our frog and cut him out. So I got a scrap of whisper what or I mean basic white hair and it really is a scrap I'm gonna just um stamp right on it and use every last bit because that's how I roll all right prince and princess is a photopolymer stamp set so I've got my stamp and pierce mat and some memento tuxedo black so let's ink this dude up oh my gosh he's so funny I thought for the last Halloween project of the season, I'd do something a little bit surprising. Maybe you've got all your Halloween stuff done. Maybe you're already ready. So maybe when you place your next order, you want to hit that $150 mark and grab Prince and Princess for the fun of having the frog and Hey Handsome, because wouldn't that make a good card for anybody anytime? Um, and you could have the frog for your next year's Halloween stuff. All right. I will also want a um, hat for my frog since this is my Halloween frog. I'm going to use the Clever Cats stamp set, this hat from there, and I'm going to do it in my Stamparatus. So I've got my Stamparatus here. I'm going to pop my cardstock in, and I want to make sure that... I can stamp this hat more than once. I love the memento. It's a non-reactive ink. It's going to color out beautifully for our frog and the um, Stampin' Blends will not melt the ink. But as for a black silhouette, a hard black uh, solid image, it's a good ink. It's not a great ink for that. But one of the things that you can do to cut down the number of inks that you need to purchase. You've got a non-reactive ink here in Memento, but you can also have that nice solid silhouette, dark black stamp. If you just pop your um, solid black image into your Stamparatus, ink it with a Memento, stamp, and then ink again and repeat. See how dark black solid that image is? All right, let's remove from the Stamparatus and color our frog. I'm going to do my frog very simply with Granny Apple Combo. And the buckle on the hat is Dark Highland Heather. And I'm doing a very simple color in without any shading or shadowing. The only thing I'm going to do for this guy is I'm going to color the spots on him dark. The rest I'm just going to fill in with a nice solid fill using the light granny apple. I'm going to do the best I can to just avoid those spots. When you're looking for a solid fill without any streaks, the best way to do that is to just work inside that, that pocket where the ink is wet that you just laid down. And then you go over the top of that ink and grow just a little bit further towards the towards the finish line and that'll give you a nice solid fill without any streaks right, we've got our solid light granny apple now let's just touch those spots and fill them in with the dark granny apple a little granny apple green ha he's so cute all right let's cut him out i'm going to use my paper snips and just give them a cut Okay, got my bits cut now. Got one more little bit of stamping to do. Let's do that. My Stampin' Pierce mat, Memento Tuxedo Black again, and this little cutout. This tag 
is from the Frightful Tags die set. It's a Halloween set that's 10 pieces and has some really fun labels in it, including this little tag. So let's go ahead and ink up Hey Handsome from the Prince and Princess stamp set. And if you want Happy Halloween, I just masked the Happy Halloween. I masked off to you and that fit just perfectly for the Happy Halloween uh, tag on this box. That stamp is from the Frightfully Cute stamp set that coordinates with the Frightful Tag dies. I can't resist another Hey Handsome. I got two handsomes that need frog treats. Oh my cute, oh my goodness. All right, let's slide this out of the way and we'll exchange it for the Simply Score tool. Got my Simply Score tool. We're gonna pop this contour scallop label in in the corner there and we are gonna score so it's on the short side. Okay, we're going to score at five eighths of an inch. And we're going through two layers of paper here. So go over with medium pressure more than one time instead of trying to rake through two layers of paper. You'll get better results. Now we want to score a second time. We're going to score at one and a quarter and just go lightly and then multiple times. All right, let's get a bone folder and work those scores and check our adhesive. I'm gonna work these backwards first. So if anything is stressed out, it'll be stressed out on the back side. So you can see even the black card stock this time on this one cracked just a little bit, you see? So that's on the inside of my box. If we turn it around now and go the other way, you can see that there's no cracking on the on the fold there. All right, here's where we're going to check our adhesive. So we've worked both of those score lines. Now this right here, we want this to go down nice and flat. So if you didn't get the adhesive all the way to the end, this is your chance before it's on the box to just reinforce this adhesive all the way to the edge so that the back of the box is nice and neat. A little liquid glue and then We can burnish that down and help it really grab. All right, that should do. Let's get our little treat box in here. We're gonna put our flap on the box now, but this is really important. The front of your box is nice and clear. The back of your box has this little flap. So make sure that when you glue your lid on you glue it to the back of the box so that the front is nice and clean all right let's get some tear and tape we're going to run an a line all the way along the edge of our smallest little 5 8 inch panel and then we're going to be sh double sure that we line that up on the back of the box now what I, I like to do is fold it so it's like a lid slide my box in make sure it's centered right to left and then just touch so that the adhesive grabs on the back of the box. Then you can turn it over to the front side of the box. You can open the tab and use your bone folder to really secure this flip top. Okay. Next up is candy. <laughs> Let's grab some candy. I got Laffy Taffy here. I found this one at the Dollar Tree. Depending on your um, color combination in designer series paper choices there's banana strawberry um, apple and grape all in this bag from the Dollar Tree so you can mix it up or you can definitely use these three for Halloween with the cute Halloween paper there's flirty flamingo in it and a bat pattern that's really cute with some pink so I think all of these are really great this is a great Halloween treat with Stampin' Up's um, um, Halloween paper this year. Let's go ahead and do all of them. I think my son would like all of them better. So we're going to give this one to the son. 
I can't wait. I'm going to go pick them up from school in just a little bit. I might even bring it with me. All right, so there's our treats. It fits four nicely. I'm going to tie a great big bow now. What's a gift box without a great big bow, right? I've got Highland Heather Grow Grain ribbon here. I'm going to loop around the front and pull a nice generous length off the right side of the box. Do you see that? Because we're gonna put that bow all the way to the right. So let's tie that up. And the nice part about this now, because we're tying it around the flap instead of around the box, is that your recipient can get the treats out of the box without having to tie the bow. They can close up that box without having to tie the bow back up again. So there's our pretty little gift bow. Give it some finesse and trim the tails. Now you say, how is that going to close? Well, I've got some nice Velcro dots. I got these on Amazon. The link will be below or uh, in the blog post right above the embedded video. These clear fasteners, 56 circles. They're 3 eighths of an inch and I love them. And when I get them, I open them up and I put them together so that the soft side and the crunchy side are stuck together and then I cut them apart. Just cut off the one that we're going to use. And now you've got a set that's perfectly aligned. Got the soft side. We're going to start with that soft side. So peel the release paper off of there. We're going to line that up and I like to just kind of dry fit it about center where I know the tab is going to catch. I close the box and pick it up, then remove the liner from the other side, close the box, stick it down, and you can pull them apart and just give a little press. Now your box is reclosable. Isn't that so cute? All right, let's decorate it with that adorable frog that we cut and colored. So here's our frog and hat. Let's glue them together and make them one piece. Just a little touch. And then we'll pop it right on his head. Don't cover his eyes too much. Now he's one piece. So cute. Hey, handsome, needs some brads. Have you seen these round and square brads from Stampin' Up? At first I was like, I don't need any more brads. I've got so many brads. Remember 1998 called and wants its brads back? Mini brads. I still have a bunch of them, but I love that these are square and they're kind of nice big squares. I like the square for this project. I'm gonna use that. And rounds, but look at these. They're like little micro size. They're so cute. And you get black and white in both shapes. See how pretty they are? All right, so I'm gonna use a square, but let me show you. Here is the square. It's a really nice way to add a tag, don't you think? I love how it finishes. And then here's the little micro dot. Oh, so cute. Anyways, let's go ahead and add this to our tag. Now the tag is going to be narrow, narrow. Let's put the brad in. And so the how I do this is I put the brad in and then I use my scissors, go between the prongs and push all the way down. Get it completely open. Now what I do is hold it between my thumb and my index finger and I just bend those little prongs down back towards the back of the tag so that they're together. And when I got them nice and close, that's when I'll take my bone folder and just press and make sure that it's nice and tight. Then I can adjust a little bit if I need to. So there's no need to Take out an eye trying to cut the prongs shorter. It works really nice for a tag. Good, yes? All right, I did some die cutting ahead of time. Let me show you what I did for our layers. I used the cute Halloween designer series paper and cut a two and one eighth inch smooth circle. That's with the layering circles dies. 
And then my favorite swoopy square. Love this die set, but I especially love the swoopy square. This is Hippo and Friends. It's the medium size. And then my favorite new layer. I love the swoopy square with the medium label. So this is the medium size one from seasonal labels. So not this long skinny one, not the large or the small, but this medium size label. And it just layers up so awesome with the swoopy square. It gives just the right um, contrast layer behind. I just love when I discover a new favorite combo. And this is definitely it. Let's glue them together. See, doesn't it just look so good together? They were made for each other. And then our designer shares paper. Ta-da! Now a lot of black Stampin' Dimensionals. I love the black Stampin' Dimensionals. I love them for Halloween, but I also just used them for a Christmas stamp stack because I used the uh, Peaceful Prints designer series paper. So the black ones were really nice with the black and red and black and green patterns. All right, so I'm putting Dimensionals on the back of my frog and keeping in mind that the frog's hat goes way past the top of our label and his feet sit on the greeting. So don't go too low and don't go too high. A little bit of planning will save you a lot of pain. And now I want some of the bigger ones on the box. Oh my gosh, we're almost done with the last Halloween project of the season. I hope you like this one. I thought this one was pretty fun. And I thought it was a really fun one to end the Halloween crafting season with because of that outside the box use of the Prince and Princess stamp set. All right, so let's just pop that guy on there. And then our Hey Handsome greeting comes next. We're going to pop that down along the bottom here, right where this little piercing is on the um, swoopy square. And then we can put this guy right on top so his feet look like he's sitting on that greening without going over the words. And there it is. We're done. Hey, handsome. Happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got any questions about the project, email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. And please reach out to that email if I can help you with a workshop order. You want to collect some orders from friends and earn the Prince and Princess stamp set? I promise you it'll do so much more than just fairy tale greetings. <laughs> and to shop Stampin' Up! 24-7, place your own order. Buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. And there, if your order is over $150, it'll prompt you to use the Stampin' Rewards. You can use the Stampin' Rewards for Prince and Princess. And then finally, if you're not a Kitchen Table Stamper email subscriber, buzz over to kitchentablestamper.com slash email and don't miss out on the other fun projects that you'll find exclusively to my email list subscribers. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.